beautiful tree and our wonderful 15-year-old who's joining us now. He's not only a New York Times bestselling author, but he's a motivational speaker as well. Please welcome Jake Marchionette. Before, before we get started, I'm part of the family, right? You I'm, are. Not, I'm, not a, I'm not a distant cousin. No. I'm in. No, I you just, are I'm in. in. Why are you the youngest? Him is the youngest. Yeah. And now now he is. The youngest. You are our youngest well, member of our family. Thank and you. Kim I was. loves you because you make her smarter just sitting next to her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> she has a compliment. Written, All right. oh, but oh. she hasn't written a book. She's not a best selling author. I have author. written a book. Well, a best selling author book, I'm saying. Oh. I know you've written lots of books. A book? Wait, wait, wait. A New York Times. A New York Times bestselling author. A book okay. is a book. But it's on your way. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank a book is a book. Thank but you're on your way, Kim, thank to being you. a New York Times. Jake, how did you get started as an author? This is your moment, by yes. the way. Yes, yes, go. I started writing in a kind of a, a weird way. When I was super young, my mom actually forced me to write. She'd force me and my sister to write. During the summer, we'd have to write. Ready? Yep. It's yeah. It's blow yep. some minds. Take a note. We'd have to write from breakfast to lunch every day and at the end of the summer we'd have to have a book the show and i hated it i couldn't i couldn't stand doing it uh, she'd always have candies and cool weird pens to make us attract us to the writing table but it never really worked and oh hold on it wait. never really worked you're a new york right. times best selling author i guess i guess uh. it worked somewhat but i hated doing it i would write my first book was i hate writing and it all in markers but you know i kept on doing it and I, it's crazy i what started was the first thing you wrote about i started writing about myself okay as narcissistic as that sounds <laughs> that's what i love to do i started writing about you know how my day was going how i was feeling and i really started to love it it became another way that i can express myself and i just it's really calming and i really started to love it wow so then, it, you, you, but you really you wrote a series of books, and it's yes, the just, just well, not at the not at the breakfast table. No, 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 no this no. is after. How did you yeah. get from writing in your family table to actually having books that are published? Practice. It's all about practice. <laughs> yeah. I have been writing since every time I'd have to write, and the the first couple books books weren't very good. A um, couple pages all in marker, but you know I kept on going. I started progressing as a writer, and my skills started to really enhance. And I started doing, I would write about what I'd love. I think that's the biggest thing. If you l write about what you're passionate about and you write about what you love, me. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Is that what you wrote? You wrote yeah, about yourself? Okay. and that was just uh, something I love to do. But what was it's, happening to you that you wrote about? Well, uh, the first book is when the character moves from Florida to Maryland, which I actually did. I moved from Florida to Maryland. And that was really tough for me as I've been in Florida for a while. And I kind of put all that discomfort into the book. I just started writing. And that gave me a lot of material. But weren't you, I understand you went through a, series, a, a, a stage or a phase, not you a phase, but you were bullied as a child. Oh, yeah. So you I wrote was, about that. That's in the book, too? I definitely, there's a lot of bullying in the book. I've been verbally bullied. I've been physically bullied. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this. I was on a middle school, eighth grade, Maryland. I was on a bus walking in, and this kid had a block of ice. It was snowing at the time, and he's like, boom! Wow. And he gets you back, where? back in my head. head. No, yeah, that's really? not good. Wow. Yeah, and I went, as soon as I got home, I told my mom, and the next day I had the principal meeting with him, me and the kid, and he started crying, saying how he was bullied, oh. and you know, oh. yeah, and he never bullied me again. So I think that's my message to kids. If you're being bullied, and you have to know, it happens to everyone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Even Kim Douglas. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I'm sorry I bullied you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can't feel like you're alone. You can't really internalize that. Yeah. And you, ju you just got to um, tell an adult. That's the biggest well, thing, uh, telling adults. You know, the pen is mightier than the sword, yeah. they say. Absolutely. Uh, but what you've also taken that to the other, another level where you're standing at a podium, I assume, and yeah. you're talking to people mm -hmm. and motivating them. So that transition came after writing these books as well? After writing these books, I, I had a platform to talk to kids and tell kids that I, as I feel that I'm no different than any other kid. And I, I believe this to my core. I feel like I'm no different. The only difference is I had a, a dream and I went for it. And any kid can do that. Any kid can do what I've done in much greater things. Kids just have to have confidence in themselves and they have to go. They have to be fearless. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of kids, they, they hate the rejection. They hate the word no. 
That's yeah. the biggest thing. And I, I tell kids, you know, you have to have the mentality that a no is just a delayed yes. It's a yes you have to work for, mm -hmm. but any no can be a yes. Yeah, but a no can be positive, too, because no's can be learning experiences, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Because as a kid growing up, and if your parents say no, it's usually for a really you good have reason. To, you have to take constructive criticism. Yeah. I love criticism every time I get it. Because I always, once I had my book, because a lot of kids see Just Jake, and they think, I can't do that. Because, and they see it's a lot of things, all these complicated things. Things, like, oh, how does, where do you start? But you have to, everyone starts somewhere. Where and did with, you start? Where, with me, I would just write on my computer, I'd print it out and put it in a binder, and I'd give it to as many people as I could as I wanted to get a lot of feedback. What did you put out? I would just print out, just write my books, and I'd put it in a binder, in a binder that shut, and I would just hand it to people. I'd say, hey, here, 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 Jay, just what Jay. What kind of feedback did you get back? Um, not very positive. I gave it to my sister, and she ripped it up. But I kept on doing it, and I kept on getting better. Like, hey, I like this. I don't like that. Maybe do more of this, not that. And I started getting better and better until I got to a point where I was really confident in my writing. And that gave me the confidence to go out and try to get an agent, try to get a pub the book published. How did you go out to, because you're really good. I mean, you're sitting here, you're a motivational speaker. I can understand why. How did you take what you do mm -hmm. as a speaker and actually go out to speak to children? I mean, how, how did you, how did that happen for you? Well, I think I, a lot of people emailed me and said, hey, can you talk to my kids? I think you're, this is a really cool story for them just to get them to love writing, get them into writing. And I said, yeah, and I just love doing it. No, so I, somebody I, asked you to I love, yeah. I love having that opportunity to talk to kids. Right. Well, we but, have, we have some footage have, of yeah, that. We do. Oh. Let's take a look Let's take at a look. you yeah. in action. I hope it's good. Right now, we know we have to have passion, we know we have to create a goal, and we know how we have to execute the goal. But along that road, there's gonna be some factors that you need to have, some intangibles, and one of them is hard work. I mean, this is just bar none. You have to be able to put the hard work in. If it was easy, everyone would be wildly successful. Wow, you're good. Wow. That was a couple years ago, so hopefully I'm better than that guy right there. Well, whoever, whoever he was, I don't that's know. What's well, your voice is getting deeper. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I've had a lot of complaints about my voice being well, too it's, high. Uh, so I've been, gonna I've been working on that. That's going to change. I love your thick skin. <laughs> yeah. Thank it's you. A, it's yeah. a, not an easy thing this to acquire. This is some thick skin right here. Yeah, well, good thick for you. Skin. Thank I'm, you. I, I'm, I just met you, and I'm proud of you. Yeah, right? thank you. <laughs> well, you're in my family, so. Yeah. That's right. More information, you can visit justjake.com. By the way, we're also giving away five copies of his Just Jake series. To some lucky viewers, you can go to our Facebook page and get up all, pick up all the information there. You are a It'll great guest. That. I love it. You. you guys are great guests. When you. we come back, we are sharing with you some of our morning uh, rituals. Next.